Do you need a license to invest in real estate? What's up everybody, it's Jamel Gibbs, your family-oriented entrepreneur. Welcome to another video. So in this video, I wanna provide you with the answer to the question, do you need a license to invest in real estate? Now this is a question I get on my channel almost every single day. The answer is no, you don't need a license to invest in real estate. But there's some caveats to that, and we're gonna talk about what those caveats are in just a minute. The first thing I want you to be mindful of is this. If you own a home right now, did you need a license to buy your own personal residence? No, you didn't. What about your first rental property? If you own a rental property, did you need a license to invest your money into a rental property in order to be able to rent that property out? Chances are no. Or if you're doing, let's say, wholesaling or creative financing in most of the country, do you need a license to do it? No, you don't. But again, there's some caveats to that. Ultimately, do you need a license to invest in real estate? The answer is absolutely not. Now, let's get into some of the caveats that I wanted to discuss in this video because there are certain circumstances where you will need a license depending on how you operate your real estate investing business. In certain areas of the country right now, there's certain states and certain cities that will require you to have a license if you're wholesaling real estate. And that has nothing to do with buying rental properties, doing creative finance. That has nothing to do with any of those things. It's only required if you're wholesaling real estate. And the reason why these states or cities or local municipalities are cracking down on wholesaling is because realtors are saying that wholesalers are operating as brokers without a license. Now, if you look at brokering versus wholesaling, there are two different things that provide two different options for a seller based on where the seller is in their circumstances. So for example, if a seller needed quick cash and they needed to sell within two weeks, a wholesaler would be a great option for that particular seller to be able to sell their properties. If the seller wanted top dollar and they wouldn't mind waiting on the market for a little bit or they wanted more exposure to a lot of different buyers, then a realtor may be a better option for that particular seller. But there are two different services being provided to the same seller. If a seller has a property that is in complete distress, meaning it needed way too much work, and even if you list it on the market, it's not gonna attract the type of buyers that the seller needs. That's where a wholesaler comes into play. Again, if a seller had a property that was in tip top shape and they knew that if they listed it on the market, it would attract a ton of traffic and be able to sell relatively quickly, then they can go to a realtor. But again, two different options for a seller to choose from. When it comes to brokering deals, a seller is selling the property for the seller. A wholesaler is the actual buyer of the property. And they're signing their name on a dotted line saying that they're gonna purchase this particular agreement. And once they sign that contract, they have what's called equitable interest in that particular property. So they can turn around and sell their equitable interest to another buyer for a profit and you don't need a license to do that. So that's where the misconception is that wholesalers are brokering without a license when in essence they're not. But in certain areas like you got Oregon, you got Illinois, you got Oklahoma, you got the city of Philadelphia, not the state of Pennsylvania, but just the city of Philadelphia that are now requiring licensing or limiting the amount of wholesaling you can actually do as a real estate investor. And then you got cities like Baltimore, Maryland. You know, a friend of mine who lives in Baltimore, he's a wholesaler, real estate investor in Baltimore, is fighting against the city who is now trying to copy what Philadelphia did and require a license for a wholesaler to be able to operate their business. But long story short, we're starting to see certain municipalities, certain states, certain cities that are requiring licensing for wholesaling real estate with the assumption that wholesalers are operating 
as brokers without a license. And that's just not the case. But it is what it is, right? Either you fight that or you accept it and you go ahead and get a license and you continue to operate your business. Now, for the rest of the country, like where I'm located here in North Carolina, it's perfectly legitimate, perfectly legal for you to wholesale real estate without a license. Now, does that mean that they won't eventually crack down on wholesaling here and require you to get a license? Could be. There can be a profitability factor for the government, right? Maybe the city of Philadelphia is making more money from wholesalers just because they're getting licensing fees now. Who knows? Maybe other states will see that the, the states like Illinois and Oklahoma are making a profit on this. And obviously, we, we know that, you know, when it comes to the money, people start to crack down on things. Either they want their fair share and they're going to force you to get a license or they're just not concerned about it. If it's not profitable, who cares? Things are moving and shaking just based on where you're located. Again, majority of the country, they're not even concerned about it. Another factor that you want to keep in mind is you have cities like Atlanta that have cracked down on real estate investing in a smaller way. Not necessarily investing itself, but the way you market for real estate investing deals. So I believe there's a law there that states that you can't hit the same seller or you can't send the same seller, let's say a postcard, twice within a six-month time frame or you'll be fined. I actually shot a video concerning the city of Philadelphia and Atlanta that I'll pop up at the top for you so you can check out. But at the end of the day, not saying that wholesaling or real estate investing is illegal in Atlanta, but the way you market to find deals has been cracked down upon because a lot of people were receiving spam. All right. So again, that doesn't require you to have a license to invest in real estate or to wholesale real estate. Now, there are some circumstances where even if you buy rental properties, you will need a license, but not necessarily a real estate license. Let me give you an example. When I used to live in Pennsylvania, I used to invest in the city of Reading. And in Reading, they require you to have a business license in order to be able to own rental properties there. Even if you're wholesaling, they required you to have a business license, not a real estate license. Two completely different things, right? So some cities, some municipalities may want you to have a business license so that you can operate your business, so that you can do business in the local area. And that's their way of taxing you. That's their way of getting their money, their fair share of the pie, and also keeping tabs on you. That's their way of making some money if you want to do business in their particular area, but it doesn't require you to go to school and do all of this other stuff to be able to get licensed to operate your business. It just requires you to pay a small fine, 50, maybe a hundred dollars a year to be able to operate your business in the local area. So you got to check with your local municipality. If you're buying rental properties, do you need a business license to operate there? If you're in Oklahoma or Illinois or Oregon or the city of Philadelphia, Baltimore, Maryland, even though they haven't cracked down on it yet, but will you need a license to operate your wholesale business there? Are you in Atlanta? How are you marketing for deals? Are you following the local laws there? Overall, there's still plenty of money to be made in real estate. Don't let licensing steer you away from being able to gain real wealth through real estate investing. If the local laws require you to get a license, just go ahead and do it. If you need a license or not, there's plenty of money to be made in real estate and do what you got to do to be able to get to the bag. I hope this video helps you out today. I'll see you on the next one.